What's it like to be a part of owning Black Caviar, David? Well, it's really surreal, to say the least. Uh, I'm obviously living any keen racegoer's dream. Sure. Uh, along with my partners, because when you buy a horse, you don't expect to get any return on it, and to have the trip we've had and are still having, uh, it's just amazing. It's mind-boggling because, I mean, people plan for success. Um, you know, they strive for it, and they might come, come up short. You've got yourself in a position where you've got the most successful racehorse in the country, and you're telling me you didn't plan it, it just fell in your lap. Absolutely. What a ride for you and your wife. It's Jill. Jill's my wife, yes. yes. Yeah, she's having a ball. She loves every part of the race in fraternity and everything to do with it. Loves Black Caviar, of course, given the success we've had. And uh, she just loves going to the races. And it's a good excuse to buy a new outfit every day. Tony. Have, you ever, well, have you ever had a dream that you don't own Black Caviar? Have you ever, oh, I wake up and go, oh, I just dreamt I didn't own Black Caviar, darling? No, I never dreamed those That's sort of things. I've only dreamed about women. <laughs> That'd be a nightmare, wouldn't it, if you woke up and think, oh, Absolutely, but Tony, it's been such a great ride. Oh. ride. Um, it could end tomorrow, and yes. you know that. And yes. So you just enjoyed the moment at the time. Sure, sure. Now, have you been at um, all the races, the, the, the 19 wins that Black Caviar's had? Absolutely. Yes, I wouldn't miss that for uh, anything. Now, are we allowed to, am I allowed to ask where the next, the 20th race is going to be? Is you that... can ask, but you'd know at this stage as much as what I do about okay. it. There are many offers out there from race clubs to, to race. Yep. Obviously, in going for the world record of 20 wins yes. in, in quality racing, uh, we don't want anything that's contrived. We, we want a serious race. and mm. uh, We're not sure. It could be uh, Morphville, it could okay. be uh, Brisbane, and it, it could be Sydney. She's got her own Facebook, she's own following. There's people coming back to the track that weren't involved in racing. What is it about Black Caviar? What, what is it? What's the, what's the, what is it? Well, we've been trying to find that answer out ourselves, but when you look at it, I think it's a combination of various factors. Firstly, there's Black Caviar, the horse. I mean, she- Great name. Is, yeah, it is a great name. Love isn't it. it. We didn't like it, some of us, initially, but okay. uh, it's sort of worn on us. Who, who thought, who came up with the name? Uh, one of our partners, Pam Hawks. Yeah, she came up with a name. Mm. Uh, but to get back to, you, to your question, yep. I think it's a, a combination of the horse itself, uh, whose nickname is Nellie when she's not racing, and she's an extremely relaxed horse. Uh, she's almost as if when she's parading around in the warm-up ring that she knows that people want to take her photo, and she'll wow. stop and prop, put her head up, and can then continue around. When she comes into the mounting yard, she again just relaxes, walking around, head down. The moment Luke jumps on her, up go the ears as if she knows she's there for business and she becomes Black Caviar, the racehorse. Wow, it's like a, like a, you hear about it with rock stars going on stage. They don't actually become that person until they hit, hit the, hit yeah. get on the stage. Yeah, absolutely. And, and look, uh, Peter Moody, the trainer. Yep. Luke Nolan, the jockey. Yep. Uh, they're so affable and available Is to the, the same public. Is it the same jockey every time that rides uh, Black Caviar? Yes. Uh, the first race, the first two races were ridden by an apprentice from uh, West Australia called Jared Noski. Yes. Uh, because I think Luke at the time was out suspended. And the first group one win was, it was ridden by Ben Mellon because Luke was out suspended. But he's the jockey. Uh, he's the, certainly the jockey who'll be riding her for the rest of her races, all being well that he doesn't get suspended. And uh, yeah, he, he's marvellous. And then I think, um, again, what's contributed, I think the owners have been very open to the public. And in fact, as owners, we really are privileged to have the adulation by the public mm. of Australia, yeah. which is now expanding to the international market, horse racing market. Because it's, it's not something that was orchestrated, it happened. It happened. Yes. Yeah. You know, people can orchestrate things and, and, it, and it doesn't work. The public has told you they want to see black caviar, and then you've had to then abide by their demands. Oh, absolutely. And, and to see the extraordinary uh, night at Mooney Valley, uh, yes. when 350 people walked down the straight all decked out in black caviar gear and chanting and singing the black caviar oh. song, I mean, that's unique. That's, that is got to be better than Colin oh. winning a grand final. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I spoke to Simon Marshall a little bit earlier, and uh, this is what Simon Marshall had to say about Black Caviar. I'm here with Simon Marshall, 16 time Group 1 winning champion jockey, to talk about Black Caviar, the new racing sensation. G'day Simon. G'day Tony, lovely to be on your show. When did you first hear about Black Caviar? I suppose the journey began when the big mare was uh, foaled 
on the 18th of August in 2006, and then it wasn't until she uh, she was uh, by uh, Bella Spree, a champion sprinter in his time, and a champion two-year-old winner, and his mother, Hal Singer. Um, very good mare. Um, it wasn't until we were able to see her grace the turf in 2009, on the 18th of April, where she stepped out and won quite brilliantly first up. I mm. think uh, their, the racing industry knew there and then that uh, we were about to enjoy um, a fabulous ride with a very special horse, but Little did we know that it was going to be 19 straight, like well, it is today. Why? Why is so many people taken to black caviar the way they have? Is it is it the winning the Aussie thing? Winning, win, win. I think so. I mean, you, you, this day and age, it's very hard to get a, a winner in the country to to have a horse go and put two and three races together. Of course, we race seven days a week, and it's so competitive. But at the highest possible level that black caviar races in including uh, nine of her victories have been at Group 1 level. Now, that's the best possible level you can reach in racing. She absolutely smashes them. She absolutely burns the candle at both ends. Uh, she's quite exciting when she gets to the 400 metre mark. She captures the eye mm. of a, uh, yeah. a race goer. You don't have to be a, um, a, a race industry lover. Yes. Uh, you just got to love the animals and, 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 and love the, the fact that this horse is, is the fastest beast on the planet. Uh, all the best in your commentary with Channel 7. Tony, I can't wait to see her break the world record, the Māori uh, champion USA mayor Zenyatta's record, and break that in Australia, winning her 20th. Good it's the 20th, you. is it? Yeah, the all 20th right. win. Thanks, Simon. Thanks for being part of the Tony Bolton Show. Good luck, Tony. Good to see you. How has fame of owning black caviar changed your life? It hasn't changed me, I hope, uh, Tony. I think that uh, it's given me some wonderful experience and opened a lot of doors that I never, ever would have got behind. Such as? Well, I'll give you an example. I'll never forget this. I, I used to uh, practice at state school my signature autograph so that when I played for Collingwood, I would have my autograph already designed. Yep. Needless to say, I never got to play for Collingwood and I got the first opportunity to do, give an autograph at the Newmarket Handicap after the race and I had this constable come up to me and I looked at him and said, well, what have I done? And he said to me, you're an owner of Black Caviar, aren't you? And I said, yes, yeah, I'm very lucky to be that. And he said, well, would you mind autographing this photo of Black Caviar? Yes. So that was my first opportunity, other than signing cheques yes. <laughs> or letters, uh, at using my autograph. Uh, that type of thing. And so many people are so interested. That opportunity would not have arrived. You know, and, yeah. and friends tell me, you know, that they, they say, oh, look, we know a part owner of Black yeah. Caviar. And... Yeah. Obviously, when we go to Ascot, we've been led to believe that the Queen would like to meet the owners of Black <laughs> Caviar, and uh, that will be an experience. Oh. I hope we can find the time to see that. Oh, yes. Have you ever have you um, overheard conversations about Black Caviar, and you've been tempted to go tap him on the shoulder and go, I'm the owner? Yeah, have actually. Have you yeah. actually tapped on the yeah, shoulder yeah. and said you're the yeah, owner? Yeah, particularly when you hear uh, things that aren't, aren't actual. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're in 7-Eleven getting yeah. the paper and they go, yeah. you hear about Black Caviar, he's, he's up for his 17th, and you're going, yeah. no, 19th. <laughs> yeah, no, um, <laughs> it's quite interesting, actually, some of, the, some of the things you do here, some of the things that are relayed to you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it's just wonderful, so much interest in the horse. And, oh. you know, now we're in the, hitting the international scene in a really big way and... Uh, Mm. You know, where it ends, we don't, still don't know. But it's the ride of your life. Absolutely. It's, oh. it's the ride of a life that everyone would dream of. Yeah. Oh, well, what a blast and what a fun ride. I'm sure there's a long way to go for you. You're just in the early stages of it. But uh, thank you so much for sharing your valuable time with me. I know you're a busy man and it means so much to me.